Charles XII was born in Stockholm to King Charles XI and Ulrika Eleonora of Denmark. He ascended the throne at the age of 15. From a young age, he showed determination, asceticism, and a passion for warfare. His upbringing emphasized strict discipline and preparation for ruling amid constant threats of war. Charles XII entered history as the warrior king who never left the battlefield. His finest hour was the brilliant victory at Narva, but then came the long Great Northern War, ending in defeat. At Poltava, he was wounded and took refuge in the Ottoman Empire. I am not married to a woman, I am married to war, he said. Upon return, he resumed his campaigns and died during a siege in Norway. His death remains a mystery. Charles became a symbol of unbreakable will, but his ambitions drained the kingdom and ended the era of Swedish dominance. Elizabeth VG Lebrun was born in Paris into an artist's family. Showing early talent, she trained with her father's colleagues and copied old masters. In her youth, she was already earning a living with her art, and at the age of 20, became a member of the Académie de Saint-Luc, gaining recognition among the Parisian aristocracy. Elizabeth became the official portraitist of Queen Marie Antoinette, painting over 30 portraits of her. She fled France during the Revolution and worked in Italy, Austria, and Russia, achieving success everywhere. Her style combined Rococo grace with a new era's expression. I painted hearts, not faces, she said. Her autobiography reveals not only an age, but the soul of the artist. Jane Grey was the great-granddaughter of Henry VII and came from a prominent Protestant family. She received an exceptional education and from an early age was known for her seriousness and piety. At 16, she was married to Lord Guildford Dudley and soon was drawn into a struggle for the English throne. After Edward VI's death, Jane was proclaimed queen, but her reign lasted only nine days. She had no desire for power and became a pawn in others' ambitions. Mary Tudor overthrew Jane, accusing her of usurpation. I lost everything. Having wished for nothing, she wrote in prison. In February 1554, Jane Grey was executed. In the late 16th century portrait, her image appears calm, clear, almost beyond time. Antonio Vivaldi was born in Venice to a violinist father. He showed musical talent from an early age and studied violin under his father. In his youth, he was ordained as a priest, but soon devoted himself entirely to music. He was nicknamed the Red Priest because of his hair color and clerical status. Vivaldi became one of the leading figures of Italian Baroque. For over 20 years, he taught at the girls' orphanage Ospel della Pita composing concertos specifically for his students. His famous cycle, The Four Seasons, is a prime example of musical painting. Music is the breath of the soul, he said. Despite past fame, Vivaldi lived in poverty in his final years and died almost unknown. Only in the 20th century was his legacy fully recognized. Today, Vivaldi stands as a symbol of sunlit Venice and the triumph of melody. Anne de Rohan Chabot came from an ancient French noble family and received an upbringing worthy of a court lady. Her family had close ties to the royal court. From an early age, Anne stood out for her intellect and grace, becoming a maid of honor to Queen Maria Theresa and quickly earning a prominent place at court. Anne de Rohan Chabot became a favorite of King Louis XIV and one of the most talked about figures at the French court. She was regarded as a woman of exceptional intelligence and influence. Silence at court is worth more than the loudest speeches, she said, knowing when to vanish and when to shine. After her break with the king, she retained respect and held high court positions, demonstrating diplomatic tact and strength of character.
Charles the Bold was the son of Duke Philip the Good and Isabella of Portugal. He was born in Dijon and received an excellent education at the Burgundian court. From a young age, he showed determination and pride, which earned him his epithet. He inherited the title of Duke of Burgundy and his father's ambition to unite Western Europe. Charles the Bold sought to turn Burgundy into an independent empire between France and the Holy Roman Empire. His reign was marked by large-scale wars, including conflicts with Louis XI. Charles was famed for his bravery, but often acted impulsively. He wore the Order of the Golden Fleece, a symbol of nobility and sovereign power. He was called a warrior whose dreams surpassed reality. He died at the Battle of Nancy, leaving behind an ambitious but unfinished legacy. This image became one of the most iconic symbols of late medieval Burgundy. Maria Manchuni was the niece of Cardinal Mazarin and grew up at the French court. She had a lively mind and a strong personality. In her youth, she caught the attention of young Louis XIV, and their romance caused a stir at court. However, she was married off to an Italian nobleman by her family's will. Her marriage was unhappy, and Maria left her husband, beginning a journey across Europe. She wrote memoirs describing her life and passions, which caused a scandal in literary circles. Freedom became her mission. I belong neither to the king nor to my husband. I belong to myself, she said. Her story inspired women who longed for independence. William I of Orange was born into the German house of Nassau and inherited the Principality of Orange in France. He was raised at the court of Charles V and received an excellent education. From an early age, he held positions of power and participated in the empire's political and military affairs. William became the leader of the Dutch Revolt against Spanish rule. He united the fragmented provinces, advocating for freedom of religion and independence. His nickname, the silent referred to his discretion and diplomatic skill. After surviving several assassination attempts, he was fatally shot by a fanatic in Delft. Better to die a free man than live as a slave, his supporters said. He became a national hero of the Netherlands and a symbol of resistance to tyranny. Margaret Teresa of Spain was born in Madrid into the royal house of Habsburg. She was the daughter of King Philip IV and Mariana of Austria, who was also his niece. From an early age, she was raised to become the future wife of Emperor Leopold I, her maternal uncle, as part of a dynastic alliance. Margaret's marriage to Leopold I sealed the alliance between the Spanish and Austrian Habsburgs. Her fragile health concerned the court, but she maintained a lively spirit and charm. Her image is immortalized in Velasquez's famous portraits, especially in Las Meninas, a symbol of the Baroque era. She was the pearl of the empire, delicate yet radiant. She died young, leaving behind a daughter and many artistic tributes. Charles X Gustav was born in Neitgang and was the nephew of Gustavus II Adolphus. He received his education in Germany, where his militaristic worldview was shaped. He showed military talent early on. After Queen Christina's abdication, he inherited the Swedish throne and led a powerful northern kingdom. Charles X became famous for his campaigns in Poland and Denmark dreaming of turning the Baltic Sea into a Swedish lake. His swift military action, leading his army across the frozen belts, became legendary. 
he signed the Treaty of Roskilde, securing new lands for Sweden. He was called the Lightning of the North, breaking ice and borders. Despite illness, he continued to fight until his death. His reign strengthened Sweden's military glory, but left the country financially and demographically strained. Luis Francisco de la Cerda was born into a Spanish aristocratic family belonging to one of the most noble lineages of the kingdom. He inherited the title of Duke of Medinaceli after his father's death and received an excellent education. From an early age, he was groomed for court service and diplomatic missions. As chief minister to King Charles II, the Duke of Medinaceli attempted to reform Spain's weakened economy and limit the influence of royal favorites. He fought corruption and pushed for modernization of governance, but his efforts met strong resistance. Loyalty to the crown does not mean silence, he said. Eventually dismissed and disgraced, he died in exile, remembered as an honest yet inconvenient statesman. Henrietta Maria of France was the daughter of King Henry IV of France and Marie de Medici. She grew up at the French court, surrounded by art, politics, and Catholic faith. At 16, she married King Charles I of England, becoming the Queen Consort of England, Scotland, and Ireland. Henrietta Maria actively defended the interests of Catholics and her husband during the English Revolution. She traveled abroad in search of diplomatic support and military supplies. After Charles I's execution, she lived in exile for many years, maintaining pride and political instinct. I lost the crown, but not my honor, she wrote. In England, she was seen controversially, but history remembers her as the last Catholic queen before the Restoration. Elizabeth Christine of Brunswick Wolfen Buttle was the daughter of Duke Louis Rudolph and Christine Louise. She received a strict upbringing and converted to Catholicism in her youth. In the early 18th century, she married the future Emperor Charles VI, uniting Protestant and Catholic dynasties. As Empress of the Holy Romong Empire, she maintained modesty and piety. After her husband's death, she led a secluded life supporting monasteries and educational projects. She stayed out of politics, but supported her daughter, Maria Theresa, during difficult times. I was not born an empress, but I tried to be worthy of the honor, she said. Until her last days, she was respected by both court and people. Isabella of Portugal was the daughter of King John I and the English Princess Philippa of Lancaster. She received an excellent education at the court of the Aves dynasty. Her political marriage to Philip the Good, Duke of Burgundy, was part of a strategy to strengthen the alliance between England, Portugal, and Flanders. Isabella played a key role in the governance of the Burgundian court, especially during her husband's absences. She demonstrated diplomatic flexibility and the ability to balance competing interests. She was revered for her piety, intellect, and quiet strength. She was not merely the Duke's wife, but the Lady of Burgundy itself, said her contemporaries. Rogier van der Weyden's portrait captured her dignity and gentleness, a symbol of an era where power could be allied with grace. Henry III was born in Burgos into the royal Trastamara family. The son of John I and Eleanor of Aragon, he became heir after the early death of his elder brother. Despite poor health, he showed strength of character and a keen interest in state affairs from a young age. He was proclaimed king at the age of 11. Henry III earned the nickname, the Sick, but displayed rare strength of will. He suppressed noble rebellions 
reduced the power of favorites, and achieved relative stability. He promoted science, literature, and overseas expeditions, including to the African coast. He maintained contact with Tamerlane, sending him an embassy. It is easier to wear a crown than to keep it, he wrote to a friend. He died at the age of 27, remembered as an enlightened and humble monarch. Francesco Morosini was born in Venice into a noble patrician family. From a young age, he was raised in the spirit of service to the Republic and entered the Navy early. He took part in the defense of the Kingdom of Crete and earned a reputation as a brave and decisive commander. He was elected Doge in 1688. Morosini became famous for his victories over the Ottoman Empire during the Mauryan War. As admiral, he captured Athens, where he accidentally destroyed the Parthenon, which the Turks had used as a gunpowder store. Despite the cultural loss, he was hailed as a hero in Venice. He was the first to be allowed the title, Duke of the Peloponnese, for the Republic and glory. He exclaimed before his final battle. His name remained celebrated, yet not without controversy. <laughs> 